Hey guys, Andy here at MVP Java. So welcome to part two of Juice Providers. We're gonna be following the same example pretty much as part one. So if you haven't checked that out, I'll leave an annotation on the screen for you to check that out first. So this tutorial covers injecting into providers in which the example is gonna be returning a random implementation. I'll be um, dependence injecting a Java random class and a Juice map binder that I'll talk about in a second. And we'll finish off by injecting runtime data into our providers. Or really, we're going to be rolling our own factory here for a reason that I'll describe soon. And I'm not going to cover assisted inject. That'll be in a separate video. I had said I was going to cover it, but then as I was making the examples, you know, things were getting too long. And I said, no, nope, that'll be another one. And it doesn't really have to do specifically with uh, providers anyhow. So, all right. So let's check it out here. Dependency injection into providers. If we take a look at what I'm really getting at, which is the discountable interface, I have multiple implementations. It's the same thing as the other uh, part one, except I've renamed the implementation. So instead of early bird discount and night owl and all that stuff, I just, I did like small discount, which is 5%. I did a no discount, obviously 0%. And I think it was a big discount. Yeah, it was a 35% one. Okay. So I just renamed them because it just made more sense for this kind of example where I want to create a random implementation. That's not really based on time, okay? Now, if we take a look at uh, the main over here, um, I called it basic application and my main method is very simple. As you'll see, there's no logic in there. There's no conditionals. And this is really how the main method should look like, especially when you're using dependency injection. Should be doing three things. You should be injecting your master factory, which is juice in this case. That's going to create the object graph of all your factories, right? So that's going to be a separate object graph than what you're going to do here, which is inject your application. You're going to be instantiating your application. In my case, I, I called it basic application. And what that's going to do is going to create a separate object graph that contains all your business and your application logic. Okay. Now at that point, when you call your top level, your most top level class, in this case, basic application, juice will inject every single static dependency that you requested via, let's say the add inject annotation. And then I start my application. Okay. So again, one, two, three, create your object graph, your factories, create your object graph, your business logic and start your application. So what's my first top level? dependency in my constructor i want a checkout service so let's go take a look at what the checkout service needs the checkout service in its constructor i'm also injecting a discountable right so that's that interface type so along the lines here you know that i've mapped a discountable in my juice module to a discountable provider. We covered that in part one. So this is no different. I didn't ask for a provider of discountable. In this case, I opted for just the discountable. Like I explained last part, we could ask for them because you know you get providers for free, right? So I just wanted the product directly. I didn't want to have any delayed instantiation or anything like that because these objects don't really need that. They're so simple. There's, there's no overhead there. And I got my method that's gonna be called that runtime. Right, that's no different. I pass in my shopping cart total and the right discountable is going to get returned. Well, the right one, in this case, a random one. And we're going to take a look at how, how that plays out. So if we take a look at discountable here, I'm going to have that map, like I said, to my discountable provider, just the same way as I showed you last part in my module, my juice module. And we'll take a look at that in a second. Now, what's different here is that this provider is having into its constructor two things dependency injecting. One is a map and one is a Java random class. So the map itself is going to contain all the implementations. Okay. And that's going to facilitate my get method, my factory get method, because when I'm going to go get a random implementation, I'm not using conditionals here. I'm not saying if the next random number is zero, then you big discount or else if else if I'm keeping this quite maintainable here. I'm using the maximum size of my random number to be the size of my map. In this case, it'll be three because I only have three implementations. Okay, so this, this is a very nice maintainable provider. But the magic is happening inside the juice module, right? So if we go take a look at that juice module, you'll see this new class map binder that comes from juice. 
So this is a way for it to house all the different types of implementations you have without you having to write your own map, okay? So the key is an integer in this case, 0, 1, 2, and I've used my interface as uh, my value. I could even have asked, like I said, for a provider of this countable, which I did not opt to do in this case. So I have a static method new map binder. The first argument is the binder method. What this guy does is it automatically binds the map binder to a map if you want it injected automatically without having you to do an explicit binding like this is an explicit binding, right? So in my discountable provider, I asked for a map. I didn't ask for a map binder. Now I just, I named this guy map binder just to remind you that that is exactly what's getting uh, implemented here, not implemented, but injected here. So I don't have to use a juice specific class in my implementation, which is nice. So this automatic mapping is done for me within this module. Okay. And again, you got to specify the types of your key value pairs here. So this is very much acting like a map, like with uh, like dot put where you put your key and your value and all that kind of stuff. So I'm saying here, my integer position zero is going to map to this implementation, so on and so forth. And this here, at this point in the configure method is not a map per se, okay? If you go take a look at the methods off the map binder, you're not gonna find put, you're not gonna find all those other methods that you find in the uh, interface map. It only becomes a map when that binder automatically binds it for you and injects it into, in this case, your provider class. The next thing I'm injecting into that provider is a random. So I'm saying the next time you see random, I want you to instantiate this random class. Now I put this comment here to remind myself to mention to you that this is automatically done for you, right? Because what Juice will do is it will automatically try to um, instantiate the default constructor. Now in this case, random does have a default constructor. So it's actually redundant for me to put this line. I can actually take this line out and it would work all the same. But if you wanted to execute or have a dependency injection of a, a constructor with an argument, let's say I want to pass in the seed, okay, to random, then I would have to do this, okay? So if there is no default constructor, you have to instruct juice how to inject it, either via another at inject, or in this case here, just simply instantiating it in this, in this case with a seed. So I'm gonna keep it like this just to, to be explicit so you can see the um, injection happening, all right? And the third, so that satisfies those two requirements for the provider. This third one here is the same one we had in part one, right? Saying, so anyway, well, when you see this countable, I want you to map that to the discountable provider. Now, <clears throat> again, in my service class here, I said I want a discountable, so it injects it, but it really goes to the discount provider to do that. This guy over here, I get everything else injected, I get my random implementation back. So at this point here, I already have my random implementation saved as an instance variable, and it's gonna be used in the checkout. So I don't really know what I have here until runtime. So if I go here and I run this guy, <coughs> Right now I'm getting what? I'm getting a, a discount of 35% off, again, the hard-coded checkout of uh, 100 in my shopping cart. If I run it again, I get 35 again. Okay, well, so I wait till something random happens. 35 again. Hey, this is, I'm really not lucky. 5%, okay, I thought, you, know, you guys would've thought I was lying to you, right? So again, 35 seems to be uh, the dominant discount here, so, but, but it is random. Okay, so holy moly, I've never, I've ran this example a hundred times. I've never gotten 35 so many times. I'm just wondering <laughs> how that's possible. But anyway, that's the random nature of random, right? So I actually just paused the video and, and, I, and, I, and, I, and I had to execute it another three, four times to get 5% here. Uh, pretty funny. I've never seen uh, this example spit out 30. <laughs> now it's getting 35 again all over the place. Unbelievable. I swear to you guys, I got 5% not a moment ago. And uh, there we go, 5%. Holy moly, that uh, that's pretty funny. Okay, so that explains how to dependency inject um, into your provider, okay? And we took a look at that map binder, which gives you that nice flexibility in not using the... Um, 
you know the conditionals in here. Now this works nicely because you know I've I've set up this up to return a random implementation, but you know usually you will have conditional logic inside your factory method. That that's fine as long as you don't you know put all that conditional logic in your business classes. That's fine. It should bubble up at least to your factory, and then if you want to go higher than that, you can use um, polymorphism to, to to get rid of that. Okay, so let me close these guys over here, not to get confused with the other ones. And we're going to see here now, as in the outline, how are we going to inject runtime data into the providers? Okay, now here's the thing. You cannot inject runtime data using the uh, provider interface. And the reason for that is because the provider is a zero argument factory, right? That get method that we saw is actually, you know, uh, bare of any arguments. It's just get, it's not get something. So because it's a zero argument factory, you can't pass that runtime data in. So we have to roll our own factory for that. But that's not a problem because we're still going to have it instantiated and dependency injected for us by uh, juice. Okay. So let's take a look on how to do that. If we go back to the uh, basic application, everything is the same, except I've hard coded the loop just to make things real simple for the tutorial. And I'm getting now the checkout value, um, you know, via user input. So it's not too important how I do that, but I'm just simulating some sort of GUI here. I have uh, a shopping cart that I've created, which is a very simple container that just now is going to house um, the shopping cart total and the time of checkout, which is going to get that data um, at runtime because I'm, I'm actually going through these private methods that is just going to read the command line. Okay. So I'll be able to test this out with you guys. Um, that's how it works. Everything else is the same. Like I said, you got those two object graphs created, you start your application. So top down, right? And all the dependencies get injected top down. So again, the checkout service, Let's go take a look at that. Has that changed? Well, it has changed because now I'm injecting in there my custom factory, my discount factory. So let's take a look at this discount factory. In fact, the discount factory is just an interface, right? And if you remember one of my videos, I showed you how to, so if you only have one implementation, you can use the implemented by annotation to point to which implementation um, you're actually gonna be using without using an explicit binding, right? So I'm using the card discount factory here. Didn't know what to call it, called it that, right? Sometimes the hardest thing to do is to find good names, right? So the card discount factory in this case is my custom factory. So my custom factory method is the get discount. And you'll notice that it's taking in an argument. That's that argument that's going to come in at runtime, all right? When we were using the provider, we couldn't have an argument there. So that's why it wouldn't work. So that's why I need to come up with this custom factory. And I'm still injecting my map binder here. There's nothing different there. So my custom implementation of this factory method is taking the shopping cart, extracting the hour, and then figuring out if it's an early morning hour or a late night hour and returning a discount applicable. Okay, so here, if it's between, if it's early morning, it's considered to be from five to 9 a.m. If it's late night from midnight to zero to 4 a.m. And if it's not any one of those, then I return a no discount. You'll notice here, I did not use an integer as the key in the map. I using something called a discount option, which is an enum that I came up with just to make it more readable because now we're having conditionals, right? So I just wanted to make sure that just by reading the conditional, you knew what was being returned. Now, again, I'm not saying new or anything like that. The map is helping me do this. So I'm still benefiting from that map binder. It's just that now I've had to come up with this custom factory, but that's fine because this custom factory, I'm telling Juice how to build it. So the next time I ask for it in this custom factory, it automatically gets injected in at runtime when I call the checkout method with that runtime data now that I'm gonna have in the shopping cart, it'll be able to go get the exact same, uh, not the exact same, but the, the, the correct discountable for that time of day, okay? So the rest of the code is exactly the same. I just changed how that is getting decided now. One thing I just failed to mention actually is this, um, this nice annotation singleton. So every time I inject my custom factory, I don't really want a new factory injected, okay? I want the same factory injected, it's just that the behavior of this runtime method that I'm gonna be calling is gonna be different every time, okay? So I could have done this explicitly in the module itself. There's um, 
there's a, there's a method there to, to do that. There's a scope method or two scope, and there's even an, um, there is even a num there, uh, enum, uh, having to do with scopes. I might cover scopes in a different um, tutorial, but for now, I think that's enough just to know that you can come up with a singleton without having to implement the singleton design pattern, which is, is problematic, right? So if we go back to our basic application now, and we inject our uh, application with the checkout services, all the, um, all the uh, requirements of the other dependencies will get automatically dependency injected into it top down. And so if we take a look at our juice module, let's see if there's anything different here. There's, the, there's really nothing much to say about here because we, we have the same map binder. The only thing I changed was the key value, which is now a, um, an enum, right? The rest of the stuff, there's not much in there. So this is a um, really nice configuration here that just flows nicely with the add inject annotation all the way down. So if I run this, just to show you. All right, so let's say I had a shopping cart total of $100. And again, I'm facilitating this for the demo, the checkout hour. Obviously, this would be like a real timestamp, but I'm just gonna put an hour of, uh, let's say midnight, zero is midnight, right, and internally. So I think that would correspond to 35% because that's the night owl discount, right? So there's 35%. If now, no, it's just looping, right? So again, $100 and let's say it's eight in the morning. That's that early bird discount, which should be 25%. So there's 25%. And the other case, um, let's say I had $999 and I'm shopping at, um, I don't know, at uh, 1700 hours, that should be zero, right? Because I don't get any discount because it's not an early bird discount and it's not the night owl discount. So I'm just gonna stop this here manually. And there you have it. That's how you inject a random, uh, not a random, excuse me, that was the first example. This is how you inject runtime data into your custom factory to get back the product of that factory, which in this case is a discountable. So that basically covers uh, everything I wanted to cover, okay, in here. I hope that helps you guys out a lot. With this information, you guys can pretty much do anything you want with providers now. I'm gonna come up with a separate one here for Assisted Inject to see where it applies. If you try to do this with Assisted Inject, it would be really a roundabout way to do it. It'd be, it'd be more complicated. It would, it would actually be counterproductive, okay? So there's a, there is a use case for Assisted, just this wasn't that case, okay? So I hope you guys liked the video. Uh, if you liked it, give it a thumbs up. And uh, I'm looking forward to making the next video for you guys. And I'll see you then. Ciao.